Hey everyone and welcome. In this lesson, we are going to be looking at the design methodology of UI and UX design. So basically, this is a general workflow from the process of coming up with an idea, developing it, all the way over to actually creating it and testing it out and putting it in production. Okay, now there are many different types of workflows that you can follow, but this is just a general one, uh, which has all of the main steps listed out. So let's have a look at that. So this is our UI design workflow right here. You can see there are 10 steps all the way from research to documentation, and we are going to go step by step to look at what each of these mean and how we can implement them. Okay. So first of all, we have research. Now research is important because if you're gonna develop an app or create an uh, UI for a certain demographic, you probably want to know about the people that are going to be using this UI, okay? So this is going to involve conducting user research to define the target audience and what they want and how they behave generally when using similar apps, okay? And you can do this through uh, conducting surveys, interviews, or gathering data. Now, this is also the step where you're going to develop your user stories and user personas so that you can much uh, have much finer control over who is going to be using this UI so that when you start developing, um, the design decisions are going to be informed based off that. Okay, now once you have completed your research, you can move on to stage two, which is your design goals. Now, design goals, okay, um, these are basically the goals and objectives of your project, okay? And this is just going to basically be a set of criteria for what your interface needs to achieve, what are you trying to do with this interface, and how should you expect your users to interact with it? Now, once you have developed an idea of that, we can then move on to step three, which is what we have already done, and that is our wireframe. And this is where you create a low fidelity wireframe of the interface, and its main functionality is to outline the structure and the sort of overview of how the app is going to work, okay? And you can do this in Draw.io like we done with our app, and you can just use basic shapes, okay? You don't have to go in with all the fonts or the colors or the images, okay? This is just to outline or create a wireframe of what you want to develop, okay? And you should be able to easily go in and change things around if it is needed, okay? Like we done with our iterative design. And you should also have arrows pointing to what each thing does. Okay, so in our example, when we click on the Add New Movie button, you can see it has an arrow going to the next page. Uh, so if you were to give this to someone, they'll be able to look at it, have an overview of, okay, this is what this does, and from there they can then provide feedback or go ahead and even develop it. Next, we have our visual design. And the visual design step is where we start developing our visual aesthetic for the interface. And this involves everything from color schemes to images to fonts, okay? This is where we actually start implementing um, the more stylized aspects that you wouldn't include in the wireframe. Now, once that's done, we can then go on to interaction design. And interaction design is where we basically nail down what each interaction or the different types of interactions are in our interface, okay? And this is gonna basically be how can the user interact with our interface, okay? Everything from buttons to menus to drop downs to sliders. We need to document all of this because once we send this off over to um, the people who are actually going to be implementing this inside of software, they need to know where does this button go to? What does this slider adjust? Uh, what happens if the user drags down um, from the top of the screen? Is that going to refresh or is that going to pull down some sort of drop down menu? Okay, every single interaction that can happen with your interface needs to be defined. Then onto step six, we have prototyping. And this is where we actually develop a very simple prototype of our app, okay? This isn't generally going to be done um, in your final software of choice, but generally this will be done using a dedicated prototyping tool, or this can be done in HTML and CSS, okay? You can just create a basic website um, that looks like your app and has all the interaction. So when you click on a button, that is gonna take you to the next page. When you scroll with the mouse wheel, that's going to move up and down. And this is just so we can get an overview and a general flow of how the interface is going to work. 
Now, once you have your prototype done, this is when you can start your iterative design. Now, we did sort of do this with our wireframing, and that is because iterative design can sort of be done in any step, okay? It can be done during the wireframe stage. It can be done during the uh, interaction design, okay? You may think of an idea that you want to go back and reintroduce, uh, even in the visual design phase, okay? If you're developing um, a visual aspect of your app, such as maybe you want uh, a font, but maybe you then show it to someone uh, who is a user of that app or follows along with the user story, and they might go, oh, I don't really like that font. It doesn't really suit the feel of the app. Well, you can go ahead, change it, show them again. And you can see how this iterative design process um, can really be done in any step of the process, okay? But especially once you have your prototype complete, that is when you want to start actually testing the interface with real people um, and, continue and, and continue to improve upon the design, okay? And this can be done by giving the uh, into the prototype to some test users and get feedback via interviews at the end or for them to complete a survey. And even actually just watching them or recording their screen while they are doing that is also a really good idea as you can then see live how they are interacting with it, what buttons they press, what sort of interaction they might try and do that you might not actually have in the app. And with that knowledge, you can then go ahead and improve upon the design even further. Now, after iterative design, we have the implementation phase. And this is when you finally collaborate with developers in order to implement the interface, okay? Um, now, if you are a UI or UX designer, um, you're probably not gonna have too much involvement in this phase because this is generally where uh, the coding will take place and they'll start implementing into the software. Uh, and once that is done, of course, we need to do some testing, okay? And that is where the iterative design process comes back once again, okay? You now have your interface uh, in its complete form, and this is when you can start testing it once again uh, for things that might not necessarily be design focused, but more performance focused and further issues and bugs that may occur, okay? Um, and yep, yeah, like I said before, the iterative design process can be done in pretty much any phase, and especially here in testing, um, you just want to test, 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 okay? Because only through testing are you going to improve your app further than you had initially uh, thought of during the design phase, okay? Because having real-world people actually use the app and use the interface uh, is going to be far better than you trying to think of on the spot, you know, what is a user going to like? What is a user going to need, okay? Having the actual users use the app is going to be the best way at achieving this. And then finally, once the testing is complete, we can move on to the final phase, which is documentation. And this is where you want to finalize the interface documentation, the guidelines, the style sheets. And this is because later on, uh, you want to basically have a complete overview of the project so that if you were to give it to someone else, they will be able to continue on with development or even replicate it pretty much exactly as you have done. Okay, if there is a bug in the future or if there is a uh, question someone has about why is this design feature in there, well, they can revert to the documentation, which is going to outline everything. Okay, so documenting your process as you go along is very important as at the end of the day, if you are working for a company or working on a large project, documentation is almost necessary. And that is our UI design workflow, okay? We walked through all 10 steps from research to design goals, to the wireframe, to visual design, interaction design, prototyping, iterative design, implementation, testing, and documentation, okay? Now, like I said, this isn't a complete and rigid format that you must follow, but this is just a general workflow of going from the research phases to the developing phases, um, all the way up to documentation, okay? So it just shows you the general process of how you should go about uh, coming up with an idea to then implementing it. So, thank you for watching.